Allure Boys here. My name's James Miller, and I am joined with a special guest today. No, not you, Ethan. Uh, me, and Peter O'Donoghue, for the first time in months. <laughs> uh, we have with us uh, Jer, and he is, if you want to introduce yourself, maybe give a background of who you are. I, I'm Ethan's roommate, <laughs> which isn't very exciting, but... Uh, I play a lot of World of Warcraft, and uh, I'm in a top guild on my server, and the top of one of the classes I play in World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Hell also, yeah. Also done some competitive Mortal Kombat in the past. That is that is true. I traveled for nine years now it's competing in fighting games. There yeah. you go. So a you have gamer. a lot more interesting than your guild shit, actually. That's rad. <laughs> <laughs> Not to me, it isn't. <laughs> yeah. And also our other two normal hosts. Oh, n- oh, now I can go. Now I'm allowed to go on my own show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm Ethan, yeah, yeah. as usual. Nothing special I introduced there. myself already. <laughs> <laughs> and Peter's here, of course. I already said hello. Oh, I hi. cut off Jeremy. Nice. Well, so today, um, it is a few days before the gates of Encourage are going to open the latest raid content in World of Warcraft Classic. By the time you listen to this, uh, it will be the day of or that it opens or the day after it opens. And uh, Thursday is like the first big day a lot of people are getting in there. So uh, right. it's a perfect time to talk about it. Are we going to get into why Thursday is the first big day that people are getting in there if it's the day two days after it opens? Uh, it, well, depends. For... it depends on the server, though. It depends. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So to be able to actually do this raid, there's a lot of prep work that needs to be done. Uh, we need to complete a war effort, which is thousands and thousands of material needed to be given by both the Alliance and the Horde, which usually play against each other. But this time, both have to complete tasks to uh, start a five-day walk where they walk all of the supplies down to the the gates. And then they also have to do this crazy long quest line call that you get the title The Scarab Lord in a mount. Um, where you have to put together a scepter to be able to ring a gong to open the gates. And Jer's guild actually went through this. So Jer, I don't know if you want to go through what lengths you have to go to to get this scepter and ring the gong. Sure. I have a quick question, sorry, just uh, for the layperson here. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between this scepter ringing the gong and maybe a rock tied to the end of a stick? <laughs> Magic! <laughs> Okay, uh, and we are, we have the whole lore of the creation of the scepter and why it's important. Okay, um, but first, before that, let's get Jer's uh, expertise on the painstaking task of putting the thing together. All right. So, I don't know if y'all want to delve into the quest line, but the first thing you need to do um, in World of Warcraft, like the sub factions, all have reputation, and the reputations go from hated, unfriendly, neutral, all the way up to exalted, being the highest. Um, to be able to even start the quest, you need to get to neutral with the Brood of Nosdormu faction, and you start at Hated. Um, basically, you need to collect 42,000 of a single item, um, and you need, to kill, yeah, you need <laughs> to kill bugs that can drop one to five of each of them. I thought and- it was one to four, but... So, okay, in very rare cases, it could drop five. Like, it's, like, insanely rare. You would know better than I would, so yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and there's stronger versions of bugs, which are called elites, that um, will always drop minimum three. Uh, and the non-elite bugs drop one to two or none, which is the worst case scenario. Um, the spawn timers, which is uh, when an enemy reappears... Uh, for the non-elites is three to five minutes, and for elites it can be ten to fifteen minutes. Um, I personally grinded bugs for forty-five hours, <laughs> <laughs> and I am only one person in a guild, um, uh. and we had on average forty-five people grinding, um, and at peak hours we had around sixty. Um, and in the degen hours, as we called it, the 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. block, we had 20 to 25 people on. Um, and yeah, you don't need to explain that jargon to me. The degen hours yeah. makes perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for reference, it took us, uh, we started Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. was the grind because 
in order to even do this to start the quest, you actually need to do a raid first and kill a raid boss. Yeah, so people wait for the reset, then just zoom straight to the raid boss, that get was, the head from the raid boss, and start it. Yeah, That was exactly it. Like, for most people, this would be, like, something you would do for fun because it's such, like, a long grind. But because my guild is very nerdy and sweaty, um, we raided at 12.30 in the afternoon. And as soon as we killed the boss, our guild leader and his group of people... Uh, got summoned to the zone to start the quest while we all finish the dungeon. Come on. Um, yeah, that's the gist of it. I don't know if you want to do the quest stuff. We can do that after because it's still uh, kind of long. So Yeah, we can maybe talk about it a bit later because, yeah, that's only the beginning of it. You have to do that to even start the quest. Then you have to get three major pieces of a scepter, and each one of those pieces has an extremely long quest line within itself. So I know it was. Uh, um, it originally launched on January 3rd, 2006, I think, and it... The ga- they actually only completed all the efforts on January 22nd. So when the yeah. first time this happened in the actual original vanilla WoW launch, uh, it took them like almost three weeks just to get all these pieces together. Yeah. Oof. You're limited by like how many spawns there are in a zone. And then you have the co- competition of every other player on the server, which now is like three to 5,000 people. I don't know yeah. how... So to actually do it in the amount of time that Jared did it, uh, you basically have to have an alliance guild and a horde guild working together and you just basically kill anyone who touches a bug that was <laughs> that was literally it we had hired people to make sure nobody took our bugs yeah <laughs> Dude, i went down there and just Holy for love. looking at a bug they killed me like, <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm on a different server we started on the same server but i went to earth fury and you went to i'm on netherwind now netherwind yeah so i went with one of the big guilds uh who and i guess your guild is which uh deadbeats but the biggest guild which is like a top 50 world top five na guild rise is the number one guild. right oh mm-hmm. rise yeah they type they type r-i-s-e like with spaces in between everywhere they go it's just <laughs> rise, right and people respond with like fries or cries and things <laughs> like that yeah uh with so. system of a down lyrics is what people respond with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love uh the weird like societal things that form in guild servers like you guys hired mercenaries to kill people for looking at your bugs which is just yeah well so like mm. this uh, is, it's just it's so, it's so neat there's two different ways to play world of warcraft right and it's uh player versus player or player versus environment and this is like yeah. a player versus environment quest but if you're just all you care about is the player versus player what you do is just kill people like kill other yeah. actual players rather than bosses so why not just make a couple bucks while it's like relevant and go hang exactly. out in the desert and kill people <laughs> yeah and what i did is like there's no way we could touch anything so in orgamar there's these people like rallying to make a resistance force to take down the two biggest guilds that had the monopoly <laughs> and i joined a, a raid with the resistance force and we didn't want any of these scarab pieces that take 45 hours to grind we just wanted to fuck up their time the best so the to be- pop in, so <laughs> the- was grinding them and deleting them in front of people <laughs> <laughs> uh, jesus i mean the most yeah. any good revolutionary movement can hope for right is to just disrupt yeah. the status quo so just yeah. it's, <laughs> but i think they have larger ambitions than jamie just wanting to go and inconvenience the local government <laughs> eat, eat shit proletariat oh, you damn kids yeah. and your fucking bugs Mar- Mar- mark's i think mark's wrote if you ever kill a scarab just destroy the bug parts in front of the people that care about him so yeah yeah exactly wow. <laughs> i haven't read it but i'm pretty sure it's about world of warcraft <laughs> yeah so uh i want to talk about um Cthune. And basically the War of the Shifting Sands and what leads up to the events of AQ and why we're out there killing all these bugs. Um, but to get um, context on what the old gods are, Cthulhu is one of the old gods, we have to start at the very beginning of the whole world of Warcraft. And then lead What's up to AQ? a bunch of... AQ? Oh, thank you. Yeah. On Courage, which is the city of the... The new raid. That's basically what it's called. Yeah. It's oh, okay. The new raid is the raid is. It's the gates of Ankaraj. Is there more, like parts that open up later on? There's, like, there's two. Gates? There's uh, so it's two raids. It's uh, like Ankaraj and Ruins of Ankaraj. Ruins is twenty men, and the other one is forty men. Okay. Yeah. With different sets of bosses, different loot, all the yeah. rest of it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um. But yeah, was, before we get to there, Ankaraj is also a city. And uh, there's a reason why this city is sealed off. And the very beginning of that story starts at the Big Bang of the Warcraft universe. 
Uh, this is where light and void explodes together, is how it's described, and creates many worlds across the universe. Um, within some of these planets are world souls. So not every planet has a world soul, but very rarely a world soul will be inside of a planet, and it's like an egg for something called uh, Titan. Okay. Oh, okay. Not, so only the Christian planets get world souls, right? I hope so. All, yes. <laughs> all the all the other ones, like you can you can get a, a world soul if your planet's about to die. You can get a world soul if it recants the devil and uh, accepts Jesus Christ as its Lord and Savior right before it dies. But yeah, yeah. Devil would be void, and Christianity would be light in your. In <laughs> yeah, your but Christ is written like C apostrophe Christ. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of C apostrophes in today's episode. That was a good yeah, it's all. Uh, <laughs> It's all somebody read the back of like three or four airport Lovecraft novels while they were on their way to get their job at Blizzard. I uh, yeah. the, I had to Google the four old gods today for a, a Twitter poll, and uh, one of them has a dash in its defense. So the other four all have an apostrophe. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's my guy. Yeah. So if you haven't heard of a Titan, uh, they're these colossal godlike beings made up of the primordial matter from which the very universe was born. So it's a lot of arcane power. Um, Feel free to correct me if uh, I'm wrong on this stuff, Jerry. You are correct. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll just check in every sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're imbued Meat, with the grain, dairy, vegetable. That would be the Titans, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Yeah, they're they're imbued with the raw power of creation itself, and they roam the cosmos wa like walking worlds. Like they're described as having like cities and mountains and everything all over them well maybe not cities because they don't have life on them but mountains and rivers and they're just like worlds that walk around one of them probably has a city on them and everybody's laughing at him he's just like no 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 you guys will see this is going to be worth something one day is he bender from that episode of futurama like <laughs> yeah. <for> space? <laughs> <laughs> you know i was god once <laughs> <laughs> So whenever uh, these world souls are within the planets, they're not titans yet. They're like sleeping titans or titans in incubation. So eventually they wake up. And the first one to wake up was Aman Thul. And uh, he was, um, he's like the god of time you can think of, although he's just really powerful in other ways too. So is he like connected to the, bron the bronze dragon flight? I know they're like the dragons of time. The dragons don't exist yet, and the Titans actually created the dragons. No, yeah, I know, but like, so they, they do they eventually come from him, yeah. or did they just like find him and started worshiping him? Yeah, no, the Amon Thul uh, created the bronze dragon flight and gave his powers to them. Nice. We actually, cool. that's where we end with the Titans, is them oh, creating cool. the, the dragon flight. Yeah. So uh, he realized how much of a rarity Titans were when he woke up because he was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> he like he like he's like well i guess i'm the only one here i guess i'll form the census bureau and he just like fills out <laughs> one one paper and then he's like hmm that seems low <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um so yeah he he goes out to look for other titans and uh he does find a bunch of them eventually and they slowly wake up and they create the pantheon which is just like the group of gods or group of titans that look over the universe and their main motivation is to find other titans and also protect even planets that don't have a world soul soul within it they're interested in protecting all uh creation see ethan it's not just the christian planets <laughs> well there are, there are christian planets just nobody told them that their world soul is useless because they're gonna get saved oh anyway. yeah <laughs> right <laughs> They go down to the little panda Buddhist planet, and they're just like, don't worry about it, guys. We'll yeah, keep yeah. you safe. Well, you too. You're <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> you love us, though. <laughs> yeah, there's a few of uh, these gods in the Pantheon, or the Titans in the Pantheon. We're not going to dwell on them for too long, but if you've played World of Warcraft or any of the Warcraft games, you might recognize some of the names. So uh, Amon Thul, he's, uh, time is like his power. He's the first one. There's Aenar. Uh, she's the life binder. She ends up making the Emerald Dream and the all the Green Dragon Flight. There's Norganon, uh, Keeper of Celestial Magics and Lore. That's uh, Arcane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Keeper of Lore. Yeah, that's like the Blue Dragon Flight. That's all the all the magic and the knowledge of the magic. Maligos the and uh, all that. Yep, Maligos ends up being the first leader. 
Uh, there's Golgoneth. Uh, that's, I think, wind and stuff like that. It's Lord of Skies and Roaring Oceans, so it's wind and water. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Kazgaroth is, like, the builder. Uh, Agrimar is... I actually don't know what Agrimar does. He gives tier strength and courage. That's all I really know about him. It's like the God, God of War, I'm pretty sure. Like, that's pretty much what he is. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then Sargeras, who comes back a bunch of times in the story yeah. uh we could do a whole episode just on sargeras so i'm not gonna dive too far you into get him rid of right him now yeah <laughs> <laughs> so the pantheon split up uh they realize that if they stay together they're not really going to find a lot of these um these world spirits because it's like a bucket in an ocean they need to fan out like a net to catch a fish they need at least a few more buckets to find anything in the ocean <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah, they split up into being six buckets instead of one bigger bucket. <laughs> Arguably yeah. better. Maybe not the most efficient way to discover things in the ocean, but all right. <laughs> uh, a net That's... is honestly a lot better than a bucket. Yeah, or six nets, maybe. Better than one net? Yeah, yeah you know what? You might be right. And in, in six, different, in six just different areas. Some of them can get, like, crabs. Some of them can get tuna, mackerels. Like crabs first. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, they... Uh... They know Why anything? <laughs> they found the the Lord of Skies and Roaring Oceans, but not the Lord of um, Rope tied into nets yet. Oh, so maybe oh, they'll find yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the net weaver, the the the, the, the fish, the fisherman flight dragon flight. They haven't found them. <laughs> yeah. their, their corn cob pipes and their raincoats yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their yellow rubber wings. Yeah. Uh, their complete and utter lack of social skills from being living isolated in a lighthouse for years at a time. Yeah, it, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so they end up finding a world soul and one that's in trouble. And can you guess what name it might be? Uh, Azeroth? Yeah, there you yeah. go. Good guess. So the entire pantheon took notice because Azeroth was not only a titan uh, or a world soul, it's not yet a titan, but they noticed that it has especially strong power. So this is a really, really powerful potential future titan so they all focused in on this they they stopped being a net and ended up being one bucket again okay yeah but once they got there they realized azeroth is not a happy place full of meadows and butterflies it is completely corrupted by creatures of the void uh what we now know as old gods oh okay oh, and they're okay. they're the lovecraftian horrors so whenever the titans got there the old gods were already rooted within azeroth all Okay, so wait, I know of four of them. Is there more than four? A fifth one gets created whenever they try and whenever they try and deal with the first four, there's a fifth one that's created, but we're not gonna get too far into it today. Okay, okay. We're talking about just the main four. So yep. go ahead, Pete. Is there a previous name for the race that they found there? Because or did that is that lost to history? Because obviously they wouldn't have showed up and be like, Wow, old gods. Uh, they say creatures of the void, and apparently okay. like there's an even bigger Lovecraftian horror somewhere out there. And these are like seeds that were sent out to find world souls and okay. corrupt them for their own use. And these four lucky ones just happened to land on Azeroth, which is a really powerful one. Yeah, really okay. lucky too. Or is there like, they have magnets for brains. So they were drawn to the world soul, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard for us to say in this fake ancient history <laughs> uh okay but so like where are we the races of azeroth aren't really a thing at this point or they are like fledgling oh no or, not at all okay so we're really oh, no we call them old gods but this is really just god we're in gods right now yeah yeah like they were there first okay yeah there's uh there might be like old creatures like bugs and stuff like that but there's no like trolls there's no night elves there's no not the ones that we know and love today. yeah okay that's kind of yeah, what I was just sitting telling. around building a Stonehenge and not telling anybody why, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, I, I was getting it confused. When you asked what planet it was going to be, I was going to guess Draenor. And then I was like, wait, Draenor is the other planet that the orcs come from in World of Warcraft and they like emigrate. Uh, yeah. Illegally, this I is, suppose. This is like <laughs> many, this is like close to the creation of the universe. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to like go. F many millennia forward and we're going to talk about some trolls then we're going to go many millennia forward again and okay, then talk cool. about yeah cool, so cool. like we're, we're very very far back right I'm now down, so a, good, a good way to picture it is like if anybody knows the way the map of azeroth looks how it's two continents yeah. at this time everything was one continent okay true 
Very cool. Okay. Well, isn't it three continents with Northrend? Uh, oh. I mean, yes, but like you'll have to get <laughs> basically like each area is controlled by an old god, and it's called the Black Empire. That's pretty much. Oh, it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, sorry, yep. I'm I'm just like because I have like a really limited frame where like I've played a fair amount of WoW, but I haven't delved into the lore like at all. And like the only raids I've done, the only raid I've really done is Ulduar uh in lich king like that was the only time i ever got close to like end game content uh and i wasn't pvping um so i feel like i'm gonna ask more questions than peter because i'm gonna try and just like frame of reference everything for myself here so <laughs> for sure uh, like this is way before any of the games probably like we're gonna fast forward two more times and then you might have more of a frame of reference okay, but perfect okay. questions are good yeah unpatched uh, so earth one continent so far <laughs> yes <laughs> Uh, so there are four old gods at this point. There's Yasharj, Yasharg. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yasharj. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Y, y uh, apostrophe S-H-A-A-R-J. Yes, so that's right. So listeners at home, you can make your own internal lore boys headcanon on how that's pronounced. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll try, but I want to be able to read it. Somebody, uh, Jamie, throw, pull I can throw it in the chat here. Yeah. Okay. Well, while that's happening, there's Yasharj, Cthun, Yog saron and Azoth. A lot of people call Cthun Seathon for some reason. I hate when people say yeah, that. I, I, yeah, I mean, that one is, like, the old gods are very clearly Lovecraftian, and it is very clearly Cthulhu, and it's, like, it's yeah. just yeah. such an easy to be like, <laughs> it's Cthun, then, you know? Cthulhu. I think Yasharj is correct, unless it's Yashari, like, if you do the, the like, the Swedish Y. Yashari. Yashari. Yes. Yishari. I'll get you, Woody. Yishari. Yeah. I'll get you, Woody. Uh, Stay away from my planet, you titans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's Yishari, there's Cthulhu, yogg Saron, and Nazar. Oh, and they ruled the planet of Azeroth during its primordial age, uh, leaders of what was known as the Black Empire, as Jared okay. mentioned. Yeah. And when the Pantheon arrived... Um, they created the pantheon created these armies um called the titan forged so they there actually might have been like humanoid type things back there because they sent a bunch of humanoids in so whether they created these to fight the old gods i'm not sure so maybe that's the man's creation myth is like the titans made them to fight the old gods i mean a lot of the creations of the titans were in humanoid form i don't know what an actual titan looks like well, I don't know for sure, but I'm picturing it as a giant humanoid, though, no? That's what it, it is, a giant humanoid. Yeah. All the yeah. pictures are, you know. So I, I don't know if it's like life in the Azeroth universe naturally evolves to be bipedal or whatever, uh, or if, you know, all life that comes somehow from the Titans and like them... Created in their likeness. Well, it may, if they're creating like things to go down and fight these things, do those things eventually evolve? I don't know. I guess we'll get there. Yeah, uh, at this point, the Titan Forge fell flat. Like, they weren't enough to defeat all of the old gods. The one that they went for first was y Yisharj, or Yisharj. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, but he was too strong for all the Titan Forge, but was weakened by the Titan Forge. So then Amon Thul, the daddy of all Titans, the god of time, reached his big old hand down, and he's the size of a planet. So he was able to tear Yisharj from the crust of Azeroth. Cool. Um, so that was cool. They got an old god, like defeated an old god, but the old god thrashed and just like fought the whole way out and made a hole into the center of Azeroth. Oh, it's like when you when you get bit by a tick and you have to like exactly. dig it out because otherwise you yeah. just like you end up with the head inside you. You can still get Lyme disease. Yeah. Oh <laughs> god. <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time I was writing this. It, <laughs> Lyme it, disease. <laughs> yeah. No, the arcane lifeblood of Azeroth uh, leaked out through this hole. And uh, they realized that if they tried to do this to all the old gods, um, they would just end up killing the future Titan. They, they'd end so, up okay. with like um, when a cartoon character gets inflated with air and gets poked with a pin and just ends up flying all over the exactly. room while making farting <laughs> noises. That's what they would have ended yeah. up with. But a planet, imagine. Yep. Very dangerous. It just collides <laughs> with another planet. <laughs> yeah. All the citizens on that planet would hear like the high pitched balloon whining for, for months yeah. as it came just, like careening towards them. <laughs> yeah. It's tough for the Titans because they wanted to remove the old gods so the Titan that is Azeroth doesn't get corrupted by them. Because imagine a Titan, but on, on the bad guy's side. Yeah. On the fighting for the void. But they can't remove them, so they have to leave them there in some capacity. So it's kind of a risky play. But 
Uh, yes, Pete? Does the Titan of Time not have time powers? Did this not come in handy with for his army of Titan Forged? So I mean, the the Titan of Time, uh, like the one of the things that he imparts on the Bronze Dragonflight whenever he passes his powers is he says there's one true timeline, and it's your job to be the curator of this. If we stray from the timeline, you need to bring us back. So that kind of it's easy way out. Like if it happened this way, it had to happen this way. Okay, if you see McFly, yeah. kill him. Don't let him touch yeah. anything. Although Blizzard didn't do a good... <laughs> he kiss his mom in front of him to make sure that never happened. Yeah. I don't... I, the Blizzard lore makers said they had to stick to one timeline, but then, I don't know, a lot of expansions later, I feel like there's a lot more than one timeline. But yeah. then if, if it's something bad that happens, it has to go back to the one true timeline so they can retcon it, I guess. So, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's one of those things, and for an, a lot of IPs do this, where it's like as soon as they introduce time travel, it's purely used so that they can retcon things in and like sell more expansions, right? Like, yeah, the caverns of time is kind of cool. You can go do old uh, content, cool. and it makes it relevant again. It's the only cause... way I ever got to do the culling of Stratholme, which we've talked about before on this podcast. So, yes. So realizing that the old gods have embedded themselves too deep within the world surface uh, to be removed without destroying Azeroth. The Pantheon decided to have the old gods imprisoned deep below the surface of the world to contain their evil forever. Um, that's how Cthune came to be contained within Azeroth in the first place. And that's the final boss of Encourage 40. Okay. okay. Encourage 40 being the gates of Encourage as opposed to the ruins of Encourage. True. I actually looked it up. It's Temple. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Temple of Encourage. The gates is just the thing we have to open to get into okay. the temple. So gates of Ankaraj is like the event, the world event that you yeah. open, you op- you unlock the two raids, the ruins and temple. Yeah, the okay. world event where people stay up for forty five hours and pay opposing factions to. I slept. I slept. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that, like I said, this ended up um, to watch over the old gods the titans created the dragon flights so this is also the creation myth of how the dragon flights came to be in oh to like watch after these people or yep. squids these uh villains in a hentai if you will <laughs> to yes. make sure. villains are the protagonist in a hentai uh de- depends who you're rooting for i guess i guess so the, uh... the tentacles or the girl <laughs> <laughs> i never thought of hentai having like a winner <laughs> uh, trust me, when, you, when you do it like i do okay there's a winner <laughs> <laughs> yeah so alex straza becomes the life binder the red dragonflight that looks over life and has been as told that one day there'll be something that can only be healed by you uh next is the green dragonflight you sarah the awakened who looks over the emerald dream and even though she's called the awakened she spends a lot of time sleeping all, almost all she does is sleep really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is it to reside within the dream perhaps pretty much yeah yeah okay there's like a, a famous character malfury and storm rage who gets uh, lost within the dream at one point and uh someone that we're going to talk about later fandral actually steps up to be the arc druid after malfury and yeah. gets lost within the Elmer- emerald dream uh, there's the Bronze Dragonflight, so those are the Time Boys. Uh, Nazdormu, the Timeless One, is the main leader. But Anna Kronos has a big role within uh, Ankaraj. The Blue Dragonflight, these are the magic guys, and they look over uh, all of knowledge. So one of the things that they were told is, like, you must guard all knowledge, but not hoard all knowledge. Uh, so, like, it's kind of like this weird uh, Catch-22. But Malagos gets his by trying to do that later. He doesn't yeah. stay the blue the blue dragonflight leader forever. It's fair. That's kind of a fair thing to do though. That's altruistic. We're just like guard the knowledge but don't hoard it. So like I don't know, like maybe do a quick survey of just like will you kill somebody with what you learn here today? And like yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody if somebody says no, you give them the knowledge. If they say yes, yeah, there you no go. knowledge for you, buddy. Yeah. And then if they do try and kill someone, you've got them. They signed and they, they signed, check that yeah. box. Take him to court. Uh, yeah. yeah, the perfect. Blue Dragonflight's lawyers are the most feared in the realm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and the last of the Dragonflights are of the main Dragonflights. Later on, they split off into like subsections, but the main Dragonflight is Black Dragonflight, and this is Neltharion, and he is the Garter of the Earth. Uh, 
a little bit of irony there because I don't. The really garter think or the guardian? I think a garter is that thing that holds your socks up in the twenties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there, it can be both. Netherian doesn't do a great job at this. He ends up being known as Deathwing later, yeah. which you probably know of. Oh, but, so uh, he's not a good guy forever. So the Cataclysm expansion is uh, Netherian, just like escaping his his chains and destroying the entire world. So the guardian, the garter belt of the world, does end up destroying it. Okay. <laughs> Azroth's socks just like slip down to their ankles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. He basically fucks the planet, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave those little garters on, I think, if I had them. And he was the winner of that hentai. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that kind of sets the stage of uh, Cthune, where he comes from. He's from the Void. He gets sent out as a seed to find um, these uh, world spirits. He ends up on Azeroth gets pushed down deep into the core uh, within Silithus uh, to basically if we pull him out, it's going to destroy Azeroth. So he has to be stuck down there. Um, so millennia, this is our first fast forward of two fast forwards. We go millennia, millennia after uh, the old gods are contained and a tribe of trolls uncovered a sleeping Cthraxi. So Cthraxi are like giant bug-like creatures and they were higher ranking members of the old gods armies. Okay. Okay. So, so I know Cthune is like kind of a squid fella. He does look a lot like legally distinct um, Cthulhu. So yeah. are, did he, instead of creating fish people, he made bug people basically? Like those are so his. <laughs> yeah. He, he more like commandeered them than created them. Uh, these, like, there's these things called. Um, not quite there yet. Let me find it. Oh, no, don't skip ahead on it. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I'll get to why. I'll get to why, but, like, uh, right now, there it's millennia later. Cthune's sleeping. We're not even talking about Cthune right now. There's a sleeping Cthraxi in a different place. And this is a giant bug-like creature that's a high-ranking member of the Old God's army, and he gets woken up before anything else from the this ancient, ancient times. Uh, he it, This happens to be Cthix, which is one of the Black Empire's most ruthless and cunning Cthraxi generals, so... Of any of ones of the the trolls to wake up, this was a bad one. Uh, upon awakening, uh, he just sends out a psychic a psychic signal to all of the Akir, and the Akir are these ancient bugs. They will become the the Karaji. So, yeah. Okay. The only so, uh, the only Akir I know is Alec here, but he has nothing to do with this, right? No, this is Q U, not K. Okay. Thank you. I thought the same thing because I heard I was watching a YouTube video and it said a cure. I'm like, oh, is that is that connected? The Windlord? But no, it's these are just ancient bugs. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. So he sends out a uh, psychic Nothing symbol. Here. Just ancient bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and he wakes up all these uh, ancient bugs that are hidden deep underground. These will eventually become Cthune's army. But right now they're not even tied to Cthune uh, that much other than they were one of the creatures way back when that fought alongside the old gods. Okay. Yeah, so Cthix organized the bugs into a huge army to take out the trolls because while everybody was sleeping of the old god's corner, these trolls started breeding and taking up all the space. We can't have that. No, no. Ew. So, yeah. Do they lay eggs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think boomkins do. I don't know okay. about trolls. Okay. You think boomkins do? They're moon chickens. And when you kill boomkins in winter spring, they sometimes drop giant eggs. Okay. Well, it sounds like they, they lay eggs then, right? That sounds like it goes against the Geneva Convention, what you're describing there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. I am a boomkin, too. Yeah. yeah. You could be oh, a then, Oh, and never mind. Then, then it doesn't apply it's anymore. Okay. You're right. It's just it's okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I just got my third uh, level 60 two nights ago, actually. I have a, a priest, a hunter, and a boomkin now. I already started the mage because I got to make money somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you have a rogue and a mage right jay yeah i'm too lazy to level something else <laughs> that's all you need dude your 45 hours your bugs it's fine <laughs> yeah so the bugs um they start to spread all over azeroth at this point and they try to hunt all the trolls the trolls end up actually working together for the first time ever and unifying into one big tribe instead of all the small tribes and they push back the akir as much as they could do we know how similar these guys are to, like, quote, modern trolls in WoW? Or are they, like, prehistoric, like, Neanderthal versions of trolls? So I don't think it actually shows this in-game anywhere. 
Like maybe there's a book that would explain that, but I just watched like someone do drawn art to the story. They okay. look similar, but it's thousands of years before the current trolls, so probably yeah. a little different. Yeah, I mean, it would be hard to tell considering the trolls still have like bones in their noses and like yeah. grass skirts and shit. It's just like, oh yeah, they they look like this, but like in suits and ties, which yeah. is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> primitive bullshit. Yeah. yeah, they won that one war against the bugs thousands of years ago, and they never moved past that style. Yeah, it's, exactly. like, it's like your dad still wears his jeans from high school or something. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. The Iron Maiden <laughs> shirt, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these bugs get pushed to three main places in Azeroth. Uh, so if you run into any of these bug families, they all come from, I'm um, forgetting the name again, the Akir. The Akir is like the root um, of all these bugs, and they start to settle in the Dread Wastes, Asgul Narub, and uh, On Karaj. Okay. And the one that we're interested in is On Karaj. Yeah. It's in Alaska. Uh, it's in Silithus. It's oh, actually okay. it's very far south. It's super far south, south, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the south westernmost point on the map, I think. Yes. It's all desert. It's all desert. So these uh, bugs that settled in Silithus um, is happen to be in one of the holes where Cthulhu was buried, and they start slowly morphing from their previous self into the Ankaraji army. Bugs that are mostly docile, uh, like the Ankaraji by themselves, they're okay. They're they're bugs. Like if you go in there, kick their hive, they'll get mad. But they're not going to aggressively move out from there until Cthune, um starts to send out psychic signals, and they go crazy. They get so bloodlusty. So okay. um, what's his face? This Akira guy uh, woke up, uh, Cthrax or whatever woke up. Cthrax just yeah. like by coincidence, and then Cthune is slowly. Uh, troll- a troll fell like a fell over his head while they're exploring. Basically. Okay, and that, but yeah. Cthune is has always been sending out psychic pulses, or is now coincidental? No, Cth- Cthune's been pretty much asleep since like um, the war against the Titans, and now since the the bugs have been driven further and further to the corners of the earth, like we said, this is the southwest portion point. Um, they're kind of pushed to where Cthune is. And they start oh. to become roused by his energy. Oh, okay. And, yeah. like, maybe it's 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 a symbiotic relationship where their energy is kind of rousing him and he's rousing them to be uh, worse bugs. Yeah, but for now, they're not being worse bugs. They actually all go to sleep for, like, another few thousand years. They oh. just, they're under his influence, but there is a reason why Cthune gets angry, and that's a little bit Okay, later. That's cool. the next point. Yeah. So, thousands of years pass where bugs took their dirt naps along with their god, Cthune. And everything's cool. And now we move on to the next section called War of the Shifting Sands. Well, that sounds so, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super peaceful. Yeah. Uh, so the people who actually started the events for this was a bunch of night elves. Uh, they didn't like that Silithus was a desert, so they decided to try and terraform it into a lush forest. Classic uh, alliance while... scum. <laughs> 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 yeah, while they were scouting the area and planning which tree was going to be their new Starbucks... They accidentally woke up the Karaji. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking uh, gentrifying, man. You just, you can't, I yeah. can't even afford a place in Silithus anymore. You know what I mean? Like, price, <laughs> rent prices are just going through the roof. 200 gold a month? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Cthune was really not happy that the Night Elves were coming so close to its domain. This is like a pretty desolate place. And like, even in Classic WoW, there was not many reasons for people to be down there until phase five came out basically maybe phase four when you could start grinding rep it was pretty much a dead area no one was there um but now these elves start doing things and it makes the bugs go crazy and after the bee's nest was kicked by the elves the bugs started multiplying and pushing out from their home in encourage i so, hate it when you try and gentrify a bee's nest and all the bees get upset <laughs> hey, and you raise yeah. rent in the hive hey bee, bees know how to form a union man if anybody does bees do yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so an arc druid by the name of fandral staghelm was put in charge of fighting back against the karaji and as hard as the elves try there was just too many uh hey, they so, seem to be animal- 
we know we're literally uh, at the other, basically at the other pole of our world from where our homeland is. Uh, and we're trying to gentrify this other neighborhood. And the locals really seem to not like it, but just go to war with them and make sure that they subdue and let us gentrify <laughs> Silithus, please. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, at this point, like after they woke up, they were worried that the bugs are going to spread to Ungoro and like the rest of it. Like they just started multiplying uh, at such a fast rate. They, they felt they had to control it. Like, they're trying to we... hide their mistake, basically. Yeah. They're just like, okay. <laughs> I understand property value here was going to be great, but we hit a little snag <laughs> when we awakened a hive of immortal bug monsters. Uh, <laughs> we're going to really need a loan and a war if you want to fit us this real estate development right here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's actually a pretty good point because he went to uh, Tenaris next to speak with the bronze dragon flight for that loan to get the construction done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I think get the permits. <laughs> yeah. The elves needed help. They were not going to win this on their own. So they asked some dragons. Um, they said the bronze dragonflight sleepily told the elves to handle it themselves and just went back to their own business. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't help. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Is it good? I mean, all the dragonflight are dicks. That's pretty much it. I, they're, uh, yeah. they're pretty, pretty haughty. They're pretty uh, up in their ivory towers being like, no, no, no. We know what's best for all of the mortal races while we're immortal. Later on, they're literally in an ivory tower. So, <laughs> uh, so um, Fandral goes back to war. Uh, the dr Dragonflight won't help, so we got to figure out a way to do it ourselves. And one day, while they're pushing forward, uh, there's news of one of their towns back behind them, like within their own lines, was being attacked. So Fandral's son, Valstan. Uh, said he would go and take care of it. Fandrell reluctantly said, okay, my son, go and come back soon. Uh, in the coming days after his son left, uh, it was really quiet. Like, there was not a lot of generals out. The sound of buzzing flies or bugs that coming to attack were just not out there. Uh, until the third day, where the bugs approached the elven forces. So you can picture two large armies, the elven forces all laid out, and the bugs flying forward. And the three days of silence being broken by the sounds of thousands upon thousands of bug wings as they approached on the desert landscape. It's like okay. it's like every 19 years when you get that one really good year where the cicadas all wake up. Like the big, the oh, big yeah. cicadas wake up and so, all that summer is just the noisiest summer, right? Yeah. <laughs> and all of the elf, all the night elves are like, most of them are druids too. So they're in like different forms. Like there's bears and tigers and different things. And all these bugs are approaching. I Very can't good. call for help on the phone. I just got these tiger paws. Damn yeah. it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, it's Panic. something classic that annoys me. You can't talk to people unless you move out of a tiger form or moonkin form. But I guess that's sort of real. I can't even take a flight path as a moonkin. Anyways. You're a little chonky for that griffin. I think you'd tire him out. Oh, maybe that's why. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the flight master can understand you, but he's just like, no, man. Like, come on. You got you to gotta transform <laughs> yeah. back into your regular self. Yeah, you got What's wings. That? Fly hoot, yourself. Hoot, hoot, I can't understand you. Where <laughs> yeah. do you want to go? <laughs> Patronizing son of a bitch. <laughs> if you didn't have a monopoly on fast speed overland travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this, the two, the bugs approach all of the druids, and they can see that in one of the general's arms is Fagil's son, and the general on the bug side. So he's shockingly still alive. So Fandral is, is happy to see his son is alive, but very worried because he's in the arms of the enemy. Do you mean like in a loving embrace or? Uh, he's holding his like bloody body and then he lifts him up and tears him into pieces in front of his father's eyes and in front of all of the night elves. So not lovingly. No, not okay. lovingly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends on how you draw your hentai, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I won't lie. When you started saying this, I was really hoping that he'd just be like, Dad, I know you'll never accept us, but I'm in love. And he's just like there <laughs> <laughs> with the Cathrax general, just like re ready yeah. to start his own family, you know? Yes. <laughs> Does it does it have sex organs? Or are you? <laughs> are you gay? Do I? How do I accept you? Yeah. <laughs> There's a scarab with like lipstick squirting something with pheromones onto herself. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. No son of mine is gonna marry a bug. Yeah, <laughs> just lipstick on the shell. They don't yeah. have lips. 
Yeah. Or they Maybe just, that would have made him fight harder. But. Just like you know how some <laughs> some animals like the stick mo stick bug or whatever, they he just like developed like a sexy lady on his shell, you know? Like <laughs> like painted on? <laughs> yeah, no, but like evolved on. It's just like the color of his shell is just a sexy night elf lady. Oh, you mean he's <laughs> camouflaged as exactly. a sexy lady. So the the, pred oh, the predator night elves ladies, show up. <laughs> the predator night elves show yeah. up and he's just like, Oh, hello, lady, I wasn't expecting to find you here. <laughs> yeah. He can like flip it up so you see the lady, and then he scuttles yeah. into the sand so you only see the yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, for those at home, I was doing the dancing spider shit with a dumb face. Just yeah. So, um, the elves lost their will to fight at this point because Fandral was broken. He was their leader. Uh, he was the, the war chief for not, that's not the words the Alliance would use, but basically what he is. And, uh, they ended up retreating. Uh, the bugs we pushed like to call them peace chiefs really here right. on the Alliance side. On the side. Alliance side, yeah. <laughs> Jared plays Alliance and I play Horrid, so I I'll just keep it. Alliance, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what would you call it? I, I don't what, care. But what's, what's, <laughs> what's, what's like Varian Rin's title? What's like the leader of the Alliance called? Uh, I don't know. King of Stormwind, I think. That's mm. just it. Okay. But was Fandral really King of Stormwind? No, he was, no. Arc, he was the Arc Druid Arc of Darnassus. Okay. Arc Druid. I think that's like the leader of Darnassus is Arc Druid. Yeah. yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, so the elves, um, not the best fighters after being demoralized like this. So the bugs push out to the surrounding area. They overflow into uh, the crater of Angoro, and they make their way all the way to Tenaris, even where uh, the bronze dragonflight stays in the caverns of time. So this is like the bottom of Kalimdor. They've made their way from the westernmost point to the easternmost point. I, so the, for anybody who doesn't know what the continents in World of Warcraft Classic look like, they're very tall and skinny. Uh, yeah. So you're like all the way to Tenaris, but he made it two zones over. Yeah, yeah. Still concerning, though, because it hasn't <laughs> happened for thousands of years uh, since the trolls fought them. But, yeah. Yeah, so the bronze dragons, now that the bugs are on their front door, like, well, we should probably do something about this. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. but uh, sorry, Night Elves, you just didn't realize it wasn't the right time yet. And we know we're the masters of time, right? So yeah. we couldn't <laughs> show up before. true timeline. Yeah, yeah. Now that it threatens us, now it's the true timeline. <laughs> Yeah, so the bronze dragons, they have a little bit more pulling, a little bit more pull than the, the the night elves. So they were able to get the help of the red, blue, and green dragon flights as well. And uh, they push back the Karaji. It's not an easy fight, though. One of the dragons, I believe it is Anachronos, who is pretty central in, it's a bronze dragon, uh, pretty central in the story of AQ, uh, said that for every 50 that my breath destroys, another 100 take their place. So he should stop not... using his breath then, idiot. You're just multiplying <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They decided they need to change their tactics. And they took a, a, a play out of the Titans books, actually. If you can't beat them, imprison them. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of trying to defeat them completely, they push their forces back to contain them within the city of Ankaraj. Uh, that's when I showed you guys before that gate and the gong at the, at the start. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where they got pushed back to. So the dragons <laughs> so pushed. Ori originally, the scepter had like a paper label on it that said, whatever you do, don't hit gong with this. And then that slowly <laughs> disintegrated over time. <laughs> yeah. Well, the gong and the, the gong and the scepter in our point of this story that we're telling didn't exist yet, okay. but it, it, that's where it would have been in the game. Yeah. We push okay. them all the way back. Uh, the dragons are on the front lines pushing them back, and all the night elf druids are chanting in a big circle. And they create a barrier around the city of Ankaraj, which basically cuts off all of the new bugs coming out of the hive, so they just cleaned up around. Um, so, problem solves, right? Cthulhu like and all, all these bugs are still alive, but they're contained, which they have been for thousands and thousands of years. We put a magic door and locked it. So hey, exactly. yep. just like global warming, this doesn't sound like my problem. Okay. Yep. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the bronze dragon created the scarab gong and the scepter of shifting sands. So this Anachronos made this. And this would allow us to reopen the city at a later date if we ever had to deal with the bugs more permanently. Which, spoiler, we do. If we ever, if um, we ever find a cure for bug... Uh, we can open the gate again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then all these players started raiding, and they figured it out, right? Yeah. Cure for bug. Yeah. 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 Um, so they close them away. 
and Anna Kronos hands Fandral, the guy who lost his son because the bronze dragons didn't show up in time, uh, the scepter. And Fandral broke the scepter into pieces as revenge and said, I never want to see these bugs again. They killed my son and you weren't there to help kind of thing. And um, the reason, since he broke the scepter... Jair's guild had to do those things for hours and hours to put it back together. So, <laughs> so the rest of us plebs could play on time. <laughs> yeah, and Fandral would end up going on to become really corrupted because he's jaded that the dragons didn't help him. And he becomes the first druid of the flame who embraced the nightmare rather than the emerald dream. And he's the second to last boss in the Cataclysm Raid. I think it's called Firelands. But maybe Jared would know better about that. Yeah. He is, but I didn't write in Kata. I just know that. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, so that's the War of the Shifting Sands. And then we fast forward to the current timeline in WoW. Like, if you logged in right now um, at the time WoW of recording your WoW Classic, exactly. Some of the bugs figured out how to get under the barrier or around the barrier or through the barrier in some way. And Anna Kronos decided, okay, well, this barrier's not working anymore, so the Alliance and the Horde have to reassemble the Scepter of Shifting Sands and deal with the Karaji more directly by you defeating really, Cthulhu. You really think the Bronze Dragonflight, who controls time and are the stewards of time, would have had the foresight to know that their barrier would fail, right? Well, they're idiots. They're idiots. <laughs> Every dragon, they're all idiots. <laughs> yeah. They only see into the present by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're, that's they're, it. Like, they're, they're all just like... Somebody will deal with it. It's cool. And the time guys are like, well, uh, I don't know. It's supposed to happen. You figure it out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> yeah. But beware, yeah. because the, the bugs will escape once more in the near future. But can we yeah. can we deal with that now? No, I don't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what started the whole thing to become the... the to do that whole scepter quest, like... Jer said, like, once you do that 42k bug pieces, which is a feat within itself, you have to do all this other stuff. Finding, like, a world boss dragon named Azergos. You have to find two other dragons. You have to do a raid. You have to do two raids, actually. Um, all to lead up to AQ20 and AQ40, which I'll be able... I'll be doing AQ20 on the day of podcast release and AQ40 the day after. I have three days off work, and I'm excited just to dive into <laughs> it at first. Yeah, but that's the story of uh, of Cthune and AQ and how it came to be, and it'll give you that extra satisfaction when you finally take down Cthune. I think. Yeah. I, I hope so. That's why we do this: is to contextualize yeah. the fun you're already having to make it slightly <laughs> yeah. more fun. When you when Cthune, you... Though, it, it's going to be hard to beat him. Like Jair's Guild will get it no problem. Ours will be tested, and there's going to be many that we will defeat them. Like. We're, we clear Blackwing Lair in like an hour. Jared does it in like 27 minutes, you said? Yeah, 27 minutes. It's a yeah. big fucking gap, dude. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're not slowing down either. Like we're we're only stopping to drink between poles and things like that. So Jared's guild has just got it all figured out. Do you, do you, more do you, do you think yeah. if you cut the beer out, uh, you guys would get it done faster or? You know, not so yeah. <laughs> well, we got only some one guy. Only one guy in our raid really drinks, and he doesn't fuck around until we do our MC clear, and he always just pulls, and he's a priest. Like, he'll just run out <laughs> and walk, and everybody's pissed all the time. <laughs> one time I had a few too many drinks, and I pulled Anixia, and someone captured this video of it being like, well, what the fuck? UNICEF pulled. Guys, get in position, get in position. Like, it was, <laughs> but we ended up being our fastest time. Uh Man, yeah, you're not supposed to do that as a priest. Just out here getting shit done, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about the new content. There's also, like, an event. I think it's called the 10-Hour War, the 12-Hour War. Yeah, so, like, after you finish the war effort... Um, so, basically, the war effort, like like Jamie said, it's, like, thousands, like, mil like literally millions of mats, pretty much, for both sides. Um, and once it's complete, it takes five days for the RP event to happen. So, like, five days of, like, the armies getting to Silithus and stuff, and then you can bang the gong. Yeah. So, like... 2005, they had to give five days for the characters to walk down the entire continent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, like, like legit, like, there's characters walking and getting into place. Like, it's it's honestly, like, it sucks waiting that long to do something, but it's, all, it's really cool, because it's, like, the story building is super sick. Yeah. 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 It, it's, like, it's, like, bittersweet. It's bittersweet now, and 
like they're tr- they're doing a really good job with WoW Classic. It seems like anyway of like recapturing a lot of the old cool elements of it. But really, what made vanilla WoW so special and so amazing was the fact that like none of this had ever been done in a video game before. Never had did you have to wait five actual days to complete yeah. your quest or whatever. And that the Scarab Lord title, like someone just had to figure that out, like that many, many, many hours quest. Like now you can watch yep. a YouTube video that tells you how to do it start to finish. Yeah. I but, killed one of these yeah. bugs. What if I did this for 45 hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so like you're saying, the 12 hour war. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So um, once the war effort is completed uh, and the first person bangs the gong, uh, basically like the gates open and there's a 10 hour period where anybody else that has completed the entire question can also bang the gong get the mounts and get the title um but in that time all of silthus is like a literal war zone of where cthune like enemies like all the bugs all like the um i can't what 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 are those like uh egyptian like god like uh dog god looking oh the the like an anubis style yes 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 So basically there's also anubis style things there's like giant world bosses that will spawn and it's like you can fight them and they drop they can drop loot from like the highest possible epic loot table world yeah. drops um but it's like it's super cool because like all the horde and alliance armies are like fighting as well and like you could do that plus if you're playing on a pvp server it's basically just mass pvp yeah, for 10 hours. exactly so, like in our guild instead of finishing like a second raid tomorrow we're gonna all go and just bring our 40 people and see what we can do and for context, like one of those uh, Anubis dudes could drop like Cloudkeeper's leggings, which we got in MC one time and sold for like 2.5k gold. Uh, so that's a lot of money in WoW. And so yeah. these things are going to be really sought after. And it's going to be a really cool event that's happening in a couple of days. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sounds pretty and, exciting. Yeah. So that's uh, that's the background for AQ. Uh, thanks, Cher, for coming on the show and being our expert. Do you do you want to plug anything, Jared? You want to plug your Twitch or your Twitter? Or... Sure. Um, so I just got a new computer, so I'm literally streaming all the time. My old computer was overheating, so I didn't want to stream. So <laughs> uh, yeah, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash mtl jer mtl j e r, and it's the same thing for my Twitter. And we'll uh, we'll throw out a uh, a retweet or two, uh, and and drop the link in our Twitter, but. All this stuff is happening yesterday at time of release. All this really exciting stuff and then more exciting stuff to come in the weeks, I guess. So if you want uh, nightly WoW content, Jerry's your guy to go. You guys can find me at Ethan the Dead Man on Twitter or uh, the show's uh, Twitter at Loreboys. Um, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Leave us a review. Uh, do what you can to help us out, and we'd appreciate it. Yep. Uh, head to loreboys.com slash about and um or in canada a boot and you can check out <laughs> our discord link please join the discord um i hang out with people all the time in there i play minecraft with you guys i play wow with you guys i'll play whatever you guys like and it's really cool to just get to meet our listeners and hang out in one shared place and what about you peter i'm at pete o'donohue on twitter but i haven't signed into it in weeks but you can still follow me if you wish uh and then at loreboys podcast on instagram uh to check out title cards and stories and uh, if i buy some more model kits for warhammer whatever all the yeah. art bullshit you could possibly want all just themed around our lives in one i also want to place i want to throw a quick thank you to terry one of our australian listeners yes uh, he's just subscribed at the highest tier of patron and we never thought that would happen and thanks so much terry because yeah. you help support the show you, yeah you absolute mad land mad man we, we literally made that tier, and we were like, nobody's going to do this. It was a joke. <laughs> the kid went and done it. I when, I when I saw the notification that you'd subscribed, I panic had to look at what we promised in that tier. Uh, <laughs> I got the easiest one, because you have to make a D&D campaign. Peter has to make a picture. He owns any oil, if they drill for oil in my body and find oil. <laughs> yeah, <all>. yeah. Exclusive, <laughs> exclusive mineral rights to Jamie. So I think there's still... If anybody else is crazy enough to do it, patreon.com slash the lore boys. And uh, there's still three slots in the 99 tier, I think. Um, But yeah, nobody's obligated to do that. Really, the best way that you guys can help us out is by leaving reviews and telling your friends uh, to help grow the show. Of course, if you want to support us financially and you don't believe in Patreon, you think they're they're crooks and con men. We do uh, offer lore boys prime, which is uh, you guys send us bug parts 
and we will put magnets in your brain for finding world souls. That's <laughs> <laughs> this week's Lord Boys Prime is send us all your bug parts. We want bags of bug legs and wings and uh, whatever else. Preferably, because I am a vegetarian, as many listeners of the, sh- listeners of the show would know, uh, I'd like them to be already dead. You know, So if you find a dead bug, find a dead caterpillar, you know, rip him in half, put him in a Ziploc bag and send him to us. You can keep the other half. That's fine. <laughs> Um, Fuck, dude. Don't, and, if you see a dead bug on the ground, do not pick it up. You'll get blacklisted. I'm telling you, <laughs> you cannot touch a there bug. There are on roaming my packs of lunatics outside, guys, <laughs> killing yeah. everybody who touches bugs. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I guess that would constitute a lore boys out. Boot. Oh. Boot. Boot. Boot.